Are AI models becoming commoditized? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a really interesting conversation that I'm seeing emerging more and more on AI Twitter, which is about model commoditization. Part of the interesting shift that this discussion represents is in the wake of ChatGPT being launched and a million companies getting funding, there has been a pejorative sense in many ways of startups that are simply quote unquote ChatGPT wrappers. The idea here being that if you're not building your own proprietary model, you have no moat. The interesting question, however, is how much proprietary models actually do create a moat. Take, for example, this tweet from Sully Omar, an AI entrepreneur. He writes, At the start of 2024, my startup was using 0% Google, 5% Anthropic, 95% OpenAI. Now it's 35% Google and growing, 35% Anthropic, and 30% OpenAI. We just switched to the cheapest slash best model. Maybe no one has a moat after all. Certainly this is my experience as an individual user. I am constantly jumping between whatever model I think is the most performant at any given time, with absolutely nothing resembling any sort of brand loyalty. Product experience does matter. For example, I think that the latest version of GPT-4.0 has in general been more performant to me than even Claude 3.5 Sonnet, but the interface of Claude, particularly with artifacts, does make me in many cases try to use that instead of ChatGPT. In any case, this question of whether model builders can actually build a moat around what they're creating, or whether there's just going to be constant shifting sands among people who are willing to switch models, is a really interesting question. Of course, enterprise lock-in and things like that could be X factors, but it's something that I'm watching closely. In the meantime, new models keep coming out, and it's clear that the competition isn't just at the state of the art in the biggest models, but is also about more performance smaller models. Microsoft has released three new Phi 3.5 models. There is Phi 3.5 Mini Instruct, with 3.82 billion parameters, Phi 3.5 MOE Instruct, which is 41.9 billion parameters, and Phi 3.5 Vision Instruct, which is 4.15 billion parameters. Now, these are small models that are putting up some really good numbers on benchmark tests. Developer Jan Peleg writes, how the hell is Phi 3.5 even possible? Phi 3.5 Mini somehow beats Llama 3.1 AB, Phi 3.5 MOE somehow beats Gemini Flash, Phi 3.5 Vision somehow beats GPT-4.0. How? Lol. Now, people haven't had that much of a chance to get their hands on these models yet, and many cautioned, assuming too much from self-published benchmarks. Still, like I said, I think the more interesting thing here, even outside where this leaves these Microsoft models in the rankings, is what they say about the state of competition. Two dimensions of this that are interesting for Phi specifically. One is, this is yet another sign that Microsoft is doing a heck of a lot of hedging when it comes to its approach to AI, and is very clearly not just resting on its open AI relationship. And two, once again, it really does suggest how much of the competition is happening in these smaller models, not just to create the most powerful large model. NVIDIA and Mistral have also released a new model called Mistral Nemo Minitron 8B. This comes a month after the two companies teamed up to release Mistral Nemo 12B. This new model was created using something called model pruning and distillation. They describe this as the process of making a model smaller and leaner either by dropping layers or dropping neurons and attention heads in embedding channels. Model distillation is a technique used to transfer knowledge from a large complex model, often called the teacher model, to a smaller, simpler student model. The goal is to create a more efficient model that retains much of the predictive power of the original larger model while being faster and less resource intensive to run. Now again, part of why these things are interesting and why it's relevant that there is this competition around smaller, more performant models is that it suggests that we're moving strongly into a phase of real practical utility and commercialization of generative AI. Companies are racing to build models that can operate on devices and at a cost that works for average consumer use cases. In other words, from a distribution of efforts and time standpoint, a lot more emphasis is going into things that could actually show up in consumer products. And of course, the competition for adoption remains fierce. The Information Today posted an article called Meta's Search for AI Clout Takes It to New Terrain. The story is basically all about how Meta is having to develop a new skill, which is to get big businesses to buy into their software. The article reads, Zuckerberg wants to turn Meta's LLM, Llama 3, into the industry standard for AI. Initially, he has relied mostly on other tech companies to handle selling the software to customers with mixed results so far. Specifically, they point to Amazon Web Services, which through their Bedrock platform offers a variety of different LLMs to their enterprise customers. Right now, however, AWS doesn't appear to be a huge channel for them. According to insiders, Anthropic's Claude is the most popular model on the platform, which could also represent preferential treatment from AWS, who has a huge investment in Anthropic. When it comes to the Azure marketplace, the information sources say that salespeople at Microsoft typically only pitch Llama to customers that have existing data expertise, rather than to more general enterprise customers. 
The rest of the article is all about the different ways that Meta is trying to resolve the situation. And again, for our purposes, it's not so much that there's a big interesting piece of news here, but more that this reflects where a lot of generative AI is going to be in the next year or so, which is much more focused on actual business competition. Speaking of models and commoditization, there are now so many great image generation models, and perhaps not surprisingly, part of the battle is moving to user interface. On that front, Midjourney has announced that their web experience is now open to everyone, meaning you no longer have to go through Discord to use it. And in addition to that, they're even turning on temporary free trials, which is something they haven't had for quite some time. Ideogram, meanwhile, released Ideogram 2.0, which I have not yet had a chance to try, but which has a ton of people so far really impressed. The AI for Success account on Twitter writes, Ideogram 2 is by far the best model for handling text and AI images and can easily handle 15 to 20 words. You can now make memes, posters, and even create YouTube thumbnails and more in seconds. Anyways, lots of goodies out there for the image generation folks to try. And finally today, a cool story from Eleven Labs. The company has announced an impact program with a vision to empower, quote, 1 million new voices to communicate, learn, and experience life without limits. This is basically a nonprofit partner program that provides free licenses for anything from enhancing accessibility, advancing education for those in need, or improving shared cultural experiences. By way of example, they shared their first initiative, a partnership with Bridging Voice and the Scott Morgan Foundation, focused on helping people who are losing their voice to ALS or MND create copies of their voices that match their natural speech so they can retain that voice even if the disease progresses to a place that makes communication in a traditional way impossible. Pretty cool little initiative. Glad to see companies like Eleven Labs doing this. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief headlines. Next up, the main episode. 